everyone, welcome back to another video of Ant Will Plays. Today we're going to be, today we're playing Choices again, and we're playing America's Most Eligible. This came out yesterday. So, anyway, let's begin the story. Uh, I hope something good happens in this chapter. Excuse me. Chapter 3 of America's Most Legible. Illegible. Uh, it's week 2 of America's Most Illegible, and you're headed to Miami's hottest club. Will you withstand the heat, or are you about to get burned? Ugh. Oh, I forgot which black man is me. <laughs> Chapter 3, Flirting for the Win. A few days after the welcome party, you are preparing for your conf conversational but your mind keeps wondering oh that's me I can't believe Piper threatened to fire Jen if I if I'm not eliminated this week you sit on your bed cradling in your head in your head in your hands whoa someone's miserable you look up to find Ryder standing in your bedroom doorway staring at you I mean I mean, are you okay? Cause you look seriously awful. Well, thanks. No prop, Casey. My name's Anthony. With a shrug, he saunders into the bedroom and flops down on Mackenzie's bed and shoes, bed, shoes and all. Wait, what are you doing? Just picking out my new digs. The bed they gave me is is a brick, and years of rocking out had have give, given me a bad luck. So you're not. So you're taking that bed. I don't think that's a good idea. Why not? My spine is killing me. Even so, Mackenzie claimed that bed already. So she doesn't have back problems, she can sleep wherever she wants. Suddenly, Mackenzie steps into the room, she stops short, staring at Ryder in horrified fury. <laughs> Yikes, why are you making that face? Scary face. Because there's a skeevy one-hit wonder on my bed. That's two-hit wonder to you, and this bed is mine now. Come on, guys, there's no need to fight. Are you saying I should let him steal my bed? No! I mean, ugh. I have a medical condition, Anthony. Back me up here. Um, I'm with her. I'm siding with Kenzie, so... I'm um, about Kenzie. Sorry, Ryder, but Mackenzie was here first. Exactly. But this mattress is so much more comfortable than the one across the hall. So, like... Sounds like you... Sounds like a you problem. What's your deal? What's your deal? Guys, Ryder and Mackenzie ignore you as, they as their argument grows louder and louder. Seriously, I think someone's coming. Soon, your room is filled with cameras. You're bumped to the side as they push Mackenzie push in the f into film Mackenzie. Ha! Huh. Now the whole world will see how unreasonable you're being, Mackenzie. Where did the camera and microphone come from? You can feel tension building as Mackenzie's gaze darts from one camera to the next. Then so quick you almost miss it, Mackenzie's scowl, Mackenzie's scowl melts into a sweet smile. What are you talking about, Ryder? We were just messing around. Right, Anthony? Uh, right. So, it's cool if I take the bed? Beyond cool. I'll grab my things and get out of your way. The cameras start to disperse, start to disperse as Mackenzie grabs her bag. That's not fair. Mackenzie, wait, are you sure about this? 
I guess he smiles again, but you could swear she, there's a dangerous glimmer in her eyes. I've never been more sure of anything in my life. There you meet Jen in the conversational room. You ready for me? Yep, take a seat. As you sit in the chair across from Jen, you feel slightly uneasy. If Piper told Jen to send me home, can I trust her? You okay? You look nervous. I'm fine, just conversational jitters, I guess. Maybe it'll help if I do some recap. In your last confessional, you choose to be you choose to be, to be America's sweetheart. You can stick with that attitude if you want, but what matters most is that you give me consistent answers today so I can edit the footage into a story arc. What do you mean? Well, you could be a villain one week, a flirt the next, and then the sweetheart after that, but I wouldn't encourage it. It's always best to not confuse America too much and a consistent confessional personality goes a long way. So try to stick so try to stick to sweetheart all summer I can do that. Great. Now let's talk about the welcome party. What was the highlight of the night? For me, the highlight was the party itself it was really fun. The cafe. The party itself was really fun. I've never been to such a glamorous party before. It was a little overwhelming to think of think to think that it was all for us. In a good way, I hope. Of course, but I don't think I'll ever get used to it. It'll be interesting to see how the game changes in the upcoming weeks. Anything you're looking forward to in particular? Getting some alone time. There's no doubt I'm going to be the first person in the house to hook up with someone. But choosing who to hook up is re with is, is going to be a real challenge. Speaking of the other contestants, tell me what, how you really feel about them. I have a ton of respect for Mackenzie. She's obviously bringing her all to this competition. If you ask me, anyone who hates on her is either scared or jealous. That was a great confessional, Anthony. You really played up your sweet side. Thanks, I feel like I'm getting the hang of this. Just then, Piper burst into the room followed by a man in, the, in a blazer. Of course, her. How can I forget her? Jen, why are you still interviewing Anthony? Your time is been is better spent elsewhere, don't you think? I was just... I don't want to hear your excuses. I want you to be more like Omar here. His contestants are giving me, me story after story. Don't be so hard on Jen, Piper. Her contestants are higher main maintenance than me. I mean... Her own cons contestant sent Bianca home, uh, home on the first night. Meanwhile, my team is going strong. <coughs> Anthony had to do what was best for his game. Enough. We got a show to produce. Or have you forgotten why you're here? No, Piper. Good. You know the consequences if you fail me again, Jane. Don't be so hard on her. It's like she's the boss of everything. Or if she is the main boss, I don't know. Now get out of here so we can prep for Omar's confessionals. Omar shoes, shoes you and Jen out of the room. Oh, that was... interesting. I'm sorry you had to see that, Anthony. Jen, don't listen to them. You're doing great. We both know I wouldn't have 
have won the first challenge without you. It shows you don't need to be a jerk to get stories from your contestants. That's sweet, but you know I'm supposed to be helping you, not the other way around. I get you. I just want things to run more smoothly than, I, than they have. What do you mean? I heard what Piper said on the first night. You were supposed to eliminate... You, you were supposed to get me eliminated, but you didn't. And if I don't get eliminated this week, you could lose your job. Jen stares at you for a moment and sighs. It's true. Piper did threaten to fire me, but don't worry. I have a plan. Does it involve eliminating me? Definitely not. Piper is all about results. She only wants you gone because she doesn't think you can give her enough drama. If we offer something else, some story arc that boosts ratings, then she'll forget all about her threat. Something tells me that's easier said than done. Don't worry, Anthony. Just do what I say and we'll both be golden. A little while later, Jen leads you into hair and makeup. You find a purple-haired woman riffling through the cloaking racks. She barely glances at you. Strip. I'm sorry? Anthony, this is Fatima. Fatima, for the billionth time, you can't greet people by by telling them to take take off their clothes. Oh my god. I know what she is. I'm a stylist on a tight schedule. Besides, Anthony won't be offended once he sees the stunning outfit I picked out for him. As Fatima searches through the racks, you whisper to Jen, that must be some outfit. Clothes are a huge part of your image on the show. The right look could make or break your reputation with America. And trust me, darling, I definitely found the right look for the challenge tonight. Fatima presents the outfit with the, with a flourish. In that case, let me try it on. Hmm. All right. Wow. Well, I look amazing. I told you, she's a genius. Please, a stylish is is only as good as their model. And you're a fab model. My clothes look sensational on you. We'd better head to the challenge. Fatima blows you a kiss as Jen leads you out of the, out of the door. Don't lose, Anthony. I want another chance to dress you up. Okay. That night, you and the other contestants traveled to, to Miami's South Beach. And find yourselves inside one of the city's hottest nightclubs. All around you, cameramen are getting into position while, you, while the other club goers line up to assign N NDAs. This place is amazing. I don't like it. I feel like I'm on a spaceship. Seriously, this is like the most pictogrammed club in Miami. You gain 100 followers just by standing in line. I never thought I'd actually get in. One of the perks of being on TV, I guess. They wouldn't... They probably would have let you in anyway, Anthony. You look like a movie star in that outfit. Yeah, you look like, yeah, you look hot. We're so getting a selfie together. Linda, they took our phones. Go ahead and waste your time with your selfies, Linda. I'll be busy winning the challenge. What can I say? When I play, I play to win. And maybe some of your confidence will rub off on me. Ugh, I need a drink. No time for that. We're about to start filming. Great, Carson. Carson beckons you, Linda, and Han over to the stand. 
or were to stand at the center of the dance floor with the other contestants. We're on in three, two. Let me put on my show ready voice. <clears throat> Welcome back, contestants. Tonight's challenge will put your flirting skills to the test. Oh, I don't like the sound of this. Me neither. You'll have one hour. You'll have one hour to get as many phone numbers as you can. Wait, what? Wait, so the... Wait, so the game is you need to get a person's phone number? So I need, like... Like a bunch of girls' phone numbers? I'm really confused now. Anyway. You have one hour to get as many phone numbers as you can. The contestant with the most numbers will be crowned challenge winner. But the two people with the fewest will be up for elimination. Any questions? Uh, let's get started. I never had to ask for a number. People just give them to me. Mackenzie plasters on a fake smile. I'd be happy to give you some pointers, Ryder. Anthony, if you could join me up here. Why me? Yes, of course. As our reigning challenge, reigning challenge, reigning challenge winner, you get a special boost tonight. A special boost? While all of you are allowed on the main floor, Anthony and four contestants of his choosing also get access to the conv get access to the convicted VIP room. Seriously, that's awesome. I know just who to pick. And cut. I was just going to choose. <laughs> Jen quickly hurries over to explain. So, Piper's already choosing the VIPs for this episode. I thought it was my decision. Like, what's the point of point in offering me a choice if I can't even take it? If it helps, I think you'll be pleased with some of her picks. So he wants you to take Adam, Mackenzie, Derek, and Zeke. Hmm, I can work with that. Never mind then. Actually, I think you can get Piper to fold on Zeke. If you'd rather bring Tegan instead first. You voted to keep Tegan in, so if you pick her, we could get good bonding footage. On the other hand, Zeke overheard Piper telling me to ch telling me to have you choose him, so he might get upset if you don't pick him. But I'll leave it up to you. At least I have some choice. I know, I'm sorry about this, Anthony. It's just the way things are on AME. Oh, right, the title of the story. With one last ap apologetic look, Jen slips behind the cameras. You rejoin Carson in front of the other contestants. It's the moment of truth, Anthony. Who will be joining you in the VIP room? I choose Adam, Mackenzie, Derek, and... Hmm... Forget Zeke. <laughs> I knew you'd pick me, picked me. Wow, Anthony, really? Yeah, um, bye, fire boy. And on that note, your hour starts now. Now? Go hit the dance floor and get some digits. Okay. As the rest of the contestants scatter around the club, you notice Piper rolling her eyes at Carson. You and the other contestants head inside the VIP room. Oh. As the crew finish setting, finishes setting up, you catch some of the club goers staring at you. Excuse me. Kind of hard to keep a low profile, isn't it? No such thing as a low profile when you're when you're on AME. 
The others split up and you start your search for someone to flirt with. But before you can even decide, a man saunters up to you, to you with a smile. Hey, you here with anyone? Just a camera crew and a bunch of producers. My name's Anthony. You offer to shake his hand, but... Hey, handsome, do you do yoga? Deegan wedges herself between you and the man, putting her hand on his arm. I can tell just by looking at you that you're incredibly flexible. This is Tegan. She's a friend of mine. It's nice to meet you. The man looks you and you up and down, then hands you his number with a grin. Okay, what just happened? Sure thing. No way. As the man saunters away, Tegan heaves a sigh. I really thought that was going to work. Interrupting me. I didn't know what else to do. I completely panicked. But he still gave you his number, so it worked out for you. And honestly, I wouldn't have given you my number too. Your aura is radiant with possessive energy tonight. For what it's worth, though, sorry I tried to steal that guy's phone number. You saved me from an elimination and you invited me here. It's fine, Tegan. We're all looking out for ourselves. Tegan gives you a weak smile before heading back into the crowd. I better mix things up if I want to win this challenge. You head to the main part of the club find, to find someone else to flirt with. You pass by Ivy, who's chatting up up an older man in the corner. I just love how dirty, I mean, Sandy Miami is. Uh, right. Oof, that's not going well. Suddenly, someone steps into your path. Um, he gives you the once over. Thought I'm pretty sure I'd remember you, someone like you. You seriously don't recognize me? I'm your roommate. I know you were self-centered, writer, but this is just ridiculous. I mean, I meet a lot of people, okay? How am I supposed to supposed to remember all them all? You turn to leave without another word. On the other side of the room, you spot Derek with a beautiful woman. Hey guys, mind if I join you? Not at all. Alyssa, this is this is my friend Anthony. I was just telling you telling her how pretty her eyes are. Aw, dear dear bear, you're too sweet. I mean I mean it. Back me up, Anthony. Actually it is smile. Your eyes are pretty, but your smile lights up the room. Oh, stop. You're gonna make me blush. You speak the truth. You're funny. And Anthony, here it is unbelievably cute. Gotta agree with you on that one. Alyssa plucks two napkins off the nearby table. She scribbles something on each of them, then hands them to you and Derek. I have to go, but call me sometime, yeah? I'd be pleasured. You wave goodbye, then head to the VIP room. As you step up to the bar, a voice rings out over the club. 20 minutes to go, contestants. That went by fast. Worried you're not going to get enough numbers? You glance up to find the bartender smiling at you. Nah, my flirting game's been on point all night. Even though I got one guy's full number. This is so embarrassing. It would help if you gave me your phone number, though. I'll tell you what. Impress me with your drink order, and I'll think about giving you my number. Hmm. Shirley Temple? The bartender raises her eyebrows. Going to conversation route. Hardly. I'm just a kid at heart. I knew there was a reason I liked you. Took the words out of my mouth. 
You turn as Adam slides onto the bar stool next to yours. You get a lot of numbers so far. I hope I get one more. You give the bartender a hopeful look. Well, I probably shouldn't be doing this, but here. She writes her napkin, writes her number on a napkin, then slides it across the t bar to you. Thanks. Don't mention it. It'll be, it'd be better. It'll be nice to, nice if someone cool won this show for once. Bartender returns to fix someone else a drink, leaving you and Adam alone. You look nice tonight. I wouldn't. I would have give you, given you my number. I don't roll that way, man. Careful, Adam. You might. If you keep being sweet, people might forget that you're the bad boy. Don't worry. I'll do some brooding later to make up for it. Hey, there you are. You turn to see Mackenzie shoving her way through the through a cluster of the camera. She stops short when she sees you and her gaze roaming over your outfit. Wow, you clean up pretty nice. Y yes, just pretty well. Okay, you clean up great, but that's not what I am what I came here to tell you. Ivy's crying in the bathroom. It's emotional, and I can't deal. You're supposed to be nice, right? Can you make it stop? Uh, sure, lead the way. Wait, I'm a guy. I can't go in the girl's bathroom. As Mackenzie ushers you away, Adam raises his glass to you. Good luck. This is so weird. Why do I have to be in the girl's bathroom? <sighs> you and Mackenzie enter the bathroom and find Ivy crying on the floor. Ivy, are you okay? Anthony, what are you doing here? This is the women's bathroom. Yeah, that's what I said. Ivory tries to wipe her tears, but her sniffling quickly morphs into a full-blown sobs. See what I mean? Can you fix her? You crouch down next to Ivy and put a comforting hand on her back. She leans into you. Tell me what's wrong. I'm terrible at flirting. Time's almost up, and I still don't have any phone numbers. I'm definitely going to be in the bottom two. Ivy, you can do this. Believe me, I get it. This experience can be completely overwhelming. But if you can handle the pressure of, of a beauty pageant, then you can definitely handle this. You really think so? I know so. Just take a second to catch your breath and then get back out there. Ivy looks almost hopeful for a moment. It's no use. I can't do this on my own. Help Ivy stay out of the bottom, too, and boost your relationship with her in this exclusive scene. Your standing in the challenge won't be affected. Hmm. I don't know. Sorry, Ivy. You'll be fine, Ivy. Just get back out there. Yeah, you have at least have, have you have to have at least show your face to get phone numbers. You're right. I have to try. Hesitant to the Ivy stands and walks to the door. She takes a second to gather herself. Here goes nothing. You and Mackenzie watch her go. Do you think she'll be okay? Nope. But at least she feels better enough to get out there, and we should follow her lead. You nod as the two of you head back out into the club. At the end of the night, you and the other contestants gather on the dance floor. You notice Tegan standing off to one side. Hey, Tegan. How, how do you think you did? Honestly, I have a really bad feeling about this. I was so worried about being in the bottom two again that I couldn't focus at all. It doesn't help that this club doesn't stock my favorite kombucha. Take a deep breath and relax. I know why you're nervous, but it doesn't mean you're definitely going home. I've, 
I've got your back no matter what, remember? Yeah, thanks, Anthony. Contestants, all the phone numbers have been counted, which means it's time to announce the results. It was a race. It was a tie, but tie race between Anthony and Derek. But the winner of tonight's challenge is... I swear, if it's a me again. Again, of course. I won? Really? I don't know what to say. Except... We all did our best. Honestly, this win could have gone to any of us. Yep. Well said. Whatevs. He, he's only saying that because he won. And now the bottom two. Oh, this won't go well. Unfortunately, the person with the fewest phone numbers was Ryder. Ha! <laughs> what? How is that possible? The other person in the bottom two is Ivy. I wish I could say I'm surprised. Ryder, Ivy, I'm sorry, but the two of you are up for elimination this week. We don't get to vote them out now? Lame. The bottom two usually sticks around for a while so they can cause drama combining challenge mind the challenge and the elimination ceremony on the first night was a twist i can't believe i'm in the body too I must have been sabotaged the camera zoom out in zoom in to capture Ryder's furious expression and you notice mackenzie smirking behind him you know what Ryder? i think you might be right the next morning You join the rest of the contestants in the living room as Carson prepares to make an announcement. Contestants, I'm very pleased to present the first date card of the season. Carson hands you an envelope. Thanks, Carson. As a challenge winner, Anthony. As challenge winner, Anthony gets to invite five other contestants to join him on a group date. And the details are in the are all in that envelope. Let's read what it's inside. We we're having a glorious a glamorous boat party on the open seas. The question is, who will who will you invite to come with you? You turn to face the rest of the contestants just behind them. You spot Jen pointing to people. Pick Adam, Mackenzie, Derek, Ivy, and Linda. Linda smirks, and when Jen points, Jen points at her, but when Jen points at her, but Tegan looks crestfallen. What about me? Don't sulk, Tegan. Anthony hasn't even picked yet, though I just I know he'll make the right choice. Linda winks at you. Oh, right. Okay. You can all you can feel all eyes and cameras in the room focused on you. I choose Adam, Mackenzie, Derek, Ivy, and What the heck, man? Oh, this is gonna Sorry, Tegan, but Linda, we are so doing shots together on the boat. You're not inviting me, but I'm a water sign. I was made for the open seas. I'm sorry, Tegan. Don't listen to her, Anthony. You totally made the right choice. You catch Piper giving Jen a nod of approval. Looks like he can make the right choice. Man, I wanted to go on the group date. No one cares, Zeke. It's cool, Zeke. We can hit the gym while they're gone. Zeke and Han exchange determined nods. Ryder scowls at them. I can't believe you're leaving me alone with these meatheads. And with that, we're off to hit the open ocean and sail off into the sunset. Hope you remember to pack your sea legs. Arson winks at the camera. You're about to leave when Jen pulls you aside. We need to talk. What's up? 
I've seen the audience numbers, and I think exactly, and I know exactly what America thinks of you. What do they think of me? The numbers are in, but does... Oh, come on! You're gonna end it right there? Okay. The numbers are in, but does America love you, or are you rating flop? Find out on the next episode of America's Most Illegible. Man, you're gonna end it right there. Just wanted a boat party. I should have picked Tegan. I'm regretting it now. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys hit this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. And if you want to get notified of the videos I put up, just hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.